going to be with people. Take your Bible tonight. We are going to be here for exactly one hour Bible study. The Bible says, faith come by hearing. Say that, everybody. I didn't hear you. Hearing by the word of God. Say it. Please respond. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What subject I want to handle tonight will help you if you follow step by step, precept by precept. Because I have found that all over the world, everyone is looking for who to pray for him for healing, to pray for you for miracle, pray for you for deliverance, pray for you for blessing. By the teaching of tonight, you will find what your part is in the ministry. Whether you are a pastor, a layman, a member of the church, in the choir, whatever you desire to become in life is possible. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We start from Acts chapter 17. The 17th chapter. The 26th verse. I want to talk to of the originality of you and creation as one people. Then we go to God's part concerning our lives. We want to talk of sickness. Where does it come from? Diseases. Where do they come from? The healing. Who owns it? God's part in our healing. Jesus' part in our healing. The apostles' part in healing. And your part in healing. Three parts tonight. Verse 26 of Acts 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. And God had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. God had made all men all nations of men made of one blood. Now look at verse 27. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Say that to your neighbor. God is not far from you. Please say it loud. I want you to say it very loud. This man knows that God is not far from him. This one knows that God is not far from him. Dr. Peter knows God is not far from him. Now, if God is not far from any one of us, say us. us. Loud. Us. Louder. Us. us. Attack it. Us. Loud. Us. us. Now say to yourself, God, God is, not is not far from me. From me. Say me. me. Not, not far, far from far me. me. I didn't hear you. God is not far from me. One more time. God is not far from me. You believe that? If it is true, he's not far from you. Why do you borrow other people's gift as against you using your gift? We want to find out. If it is true, God is not far. When I found out that Jesus said, feed, I told them in Australia in my opening message, when I heard Jesus say, feed the hungry, I choose to be the one feeding the hungry than to be the hungry. Somebody should hear what I'm saying tonight. When I heard him say, clothe the naked, I told God, I remove myself from the naked. Give me enough clothes to clothe the naked. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying tonight. <laughs> when I heard God say, heal the sick, I said, God, I have choice. I either be the sick to be healed, or I become a healer of the sick. I have to choose. Clothe the naked. Lord, I resign from nakedness. I'm going to clothe the naked. Feed the hungry. I choose to feed than to be fed. Heal the sick. I choose to heal than to be healed. Now this day you know that 
You have the ability that Christ has given you, vested on you, to help. You will not be in the need of help. When you discover that you are supposed to feed the hungry, you will not stand by the roadside to beg for food. And by the time you discover that, you were the one that the Bible says, if the spirit that dwells in Christ dwells in you, it quickens your mortal body. You become the one looking for the sick to heal, rather than coming every time, making beggary of your life in the church. It is not wrong to pray for one another, but it is wrong to become professional pray for me man. If I offend you tonight, I will affect you. I'll be very happy to offend you. It is wrong for you to always, I need prayer. Wear my head. That's for Monday. I need prayer Tuesday. Wear ears. On Wednesday, wear mouth. On Thursday, chest. On, sat on Friday, belly. On Saturday, waist. On Sunday, leg. When will you hear God say, rise and shine? Somebody say now. now. Say it again. Now. Okay, look at the 28th verse. The 28th verse. For in him we live. Say that loud. And move. And have. Our being. A certain. Also. Of your own point. Have said. For we. Are. Also, his offspring. Somebody say offspring. offspring. Look at verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Between this verse 30 says, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to change their mind. Repent. Turn from I'm weak, I'm tired, I'm bruised, I'm wounded, I'm broken down, I'm lazy, I'm sick, I'm poor. Take all the I'm negatives off your life and possibilitize yourself. You are too negative. I'm a Christian. That's why I'm poor. It is wrong. You are not poor because you are a Christian. You are poor because of your unbelief. I'm a Christian. That's why I have no good job. It's not because you are a Christian. You have no good job. It's because you are lazy. I'm sick because I'm a child of God. I'm not sick because you are a child of God. You are sick because you don't believe in healing. If you believe in healing, by his stripes, we are healed. Someone say Amen. Come on, choir conductress, come here. I saw two of you conducting tonight. You didn't know that I knew that. All right. I saw you and the baby conducting. Now, in him, in you, she lives. In you, he moves. That's two of them. All right. In you, he has his being. In you, she moves. In you, he lives. In you, she has have been and his being. Whosoever is there. Now, how much does this baby pay you to stay there? Nothing. When was the last time this child paid rent? <laughs> Never. <laughs> how much did your husband charge you for letting the baby stay there? Nothing. What is the baby going to pay you when the baby is born? Nothing. Nothing. Is there any baby there? Moving? Living? Having a being? All right. Now in Christ, in him, as this baby is in you. That is how the Bible says you are in God. Do you, does the baby pay you to leave? No. Do you take care of the baby? Yes. If you dwell in God, as this baby is dwelling in you, just as you don't pay, the baby doesn't pay to stay there. That is how you shouldn't pay to stay in Christ. Are you well? Yes. Is the baby well? Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. As long as this mother is well, baby will be well. As long as this woman is well nourished, 
the child inside medically will be well nourished. When this baby, when this woman move, the baby move. When this woman lies down, the baby lies down. In Christ, we are his offspring. We came from him, we live by him, we stay by him, we are in existence and living to his ability and capacity of possessing us. Somebody say amen. amen. For nine months, this baby will pay no rent. And when this child is born, the mother doesn't say, well, thank God you came out at last. Boom, bam. She's not going to do that. She's going to say, hallelujah, this is my replica. This is one from me, like me. That is what God does when we are born again through the blood shed at the cross of Calvary. We are Christ's offspring. When we are inside him, he takes care of us. When we come out, he takes care of us. I saw a young man tonight called Michael. We stay in the same house. He has a father. Huh? Matthew, yes. Matthew has a father. His father's name is Reed. He's all as a father, but he doesn't pay for his food. <laughs> Matthew's as tall as a father. He still takes food free. Why? He stays in his father's house. There's another girl, lady called Sarah. She doesn't pay rent. Why? She's in her mother's house. God bless you. <laughs> Do you understand where we are coming from? Offspring. Offspring. Come on, Matthew, come here quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Stand here. Dr. Mike, come up. Carbon copy. Offspring. <laughs> Offspring. Thank you, sir. Sit down, sir. Brother Matthew, when we close tonight, where are you going from here? Home. Home. You shouldn't talk of home. Where is home? Over there. <laughs> How much do you pay? About 100 quid a month. <laughs> That's good. That's good. How many years have you known the Reeds? <laughs> About 23. About 23 years. Have they been able to meet some of your needs? A few. <laughs> well, a few. Somebody say a few. Someone say a few. And God missed some of my needs too. I can testify from the read that I know the need he has not met for him is the one he didn't ask for. I can testify of that. You have a car. I saw you driving tonight. You bought it with your salary. I'm buying it. You are buying it. <laughs> have you paid yet? No. Are you driving it? Yeah. Have you paid for it? No. Are you driving it? Yeah. That's all I need. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? I'm making sense if you don't believe it. His father is still caring for him 23 years. If we, if we are in Jesus for 23 years, he cares for us. If we break away, he calls us back. If we stay with him forever, he meets our needs forever. He's our heavenly father. We are his offspring. So, where does sickness come from? Why are we afflicted? Look at where sickness comes from. Job chapter 2. If you don't know where to find Job, look for Job. Chapter 2, verse 1. 
Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Who came to God? Who came also? Who came to God? Children of God. Church members. Who also was in attendance? Satan. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And, his, and Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Every day, devil is not at rest. He's a homeless wanderer. He's looking for someone to give him his house to dwell. He goes from east to the west, from the north to the south. What is he looking for? Looking for who will give him room in the inn. Look at verse 7. I read it very loud. Everybody look at verse 7. Read it. When to go? I can't believe that my one voice will be louder than all of you. When to go? And so, when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown, and he took him a first chair to scrap himself with her, and he sat down among the ashes. Satan went forth, say that to everybody, and smote Job with sicknesses. Say it one more time. Satan went forth and smote Job with sicknesses. Satan was the giver of boils and sicknesses to Job, not God. Exodus. Exodus. It's not God that gives sickness. It's the devil. But it's God that heals. Someone say amen. amen. In the book of Exodus, the word of God says, it's the Lord that heals us. Hmm? You have your Bible? Let's look at it. Verse chapter 20, chapter 15. Exodus 15, 26. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that he let thee. Satan is a giver of sickness, and God is the healer of sickness. Do you understand that? Satan gave it, God healed it. Say that with me. Satan gives it, God heals it. Satan brought it, God took it away. Satan gave it. God took it away. All right. What is God's part concerning our healing? My belief is that God is the one that heals his children. If you read the book of Deuteronomy and read all the Old Testament histories, you find that sickness came from the devil and God brought the cure. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Turn to your Bible. The 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Let's look at the fourth verse. This is Jesus before he was born. Prophet Isaiah saw this and said in verse 4, Surely... He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, 
smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Say I'm healed. I'm healed. I didn't hear you. I'm one more time. I'm Try it one more time. I'm okay. Now, if by his stripes we are healed, look at what Jesus came to do. Matthew chapter 8. In Australia they say 8. 8. Matthew 8. Are you there? Matthew chapter 8. Beginning from the 14th verse. When Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. The 16th verse. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that we are sick. Are you hearing that? Verse 17. Why? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. That is where we just read. The prophet say, himself took, say that with me, himself took our infirmities and bare. Our sicknesses. Say with me, he took and bear. He took my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that? All right, listen to this. We went to the store today, Mama Ruth come. We went to Max and Spencer today. I collected a few items that I bought. I gathered them in a basket. I brought my money out, US dollars, 50. And Pastor Ruth said, that's not good here. She brought her money out. She, I got the goose, she paid the price. Hear this. They permitted me to carry the goods I didn't pay for. Everybody, this is a question to everybody. Why? This is a question to you. Why? I collected the goods. She paid for it. I took it and I didn't pay. I left. Why did they permit me to carry it away? Question, why did they allow me to carry it away? <laughs> Say loud, someone paid for it. Someone paid for it. What she paid for, do I have right to pay for it again? No. But do I have right to take it away? Yes. Why? Say loud, it's paid for. It's paid for. Try one more time. It's paid for. Do I have right to carry it? Yes. Did I steal it? No. Was I a thief? No. Does the thief belong to me? Yes. Now, why do I have it? No. Someone paid for it. At the cross of Calvary, Jesus paid for your sickness. Do you still have the right to carry it? No. Loud. No. Do you have right to bear it? No. Is one price enough? Yes. Say loud, yes! yes. <laughs> Are you a thief for being well? No. Are you a robber for being healthy? No. The person who paid for it, did he do good or not? Yes. yes. Jesus dying on the cross is good for me. Why are we still sick if Christ bore it? Because we have not accepted the price. 
If when she paid, and I said to Dr. Festus, I don't know where we can get money. I don't know where we are going to have money. I don't know what to do. I have no money. And she says, I paid. I said, no, you haven't paid. I'm to pay. I have paid. No, you haven't paid. I don't pay. Uh, you are to pay. I have paid. You have not paid. I have paid. I... The goose seller will say, is he all right? <laughs> it's the same thing the devil says. When he sees children of God still sick and beaten down, he says, are they all right? They ought to know that your heavenly father paid. But now that they didn't know, I give them more. So he adds sickness to our sicknesses, diseases to our diseases, because he knows we are not aware the price is paid. But the day you discover what is wrong, and you write it by faith, you recover by your discovery. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you find out that you are not supposed to be sick, you get up and say, by his stripes, I'm healed. Why? Jesus was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace were laid on him, and by his stripes, I am healed. Somebody say loud, I'm healed. I'm healed. By what? By By what? By his stripes. How are you healed? By his stripes. He took, he himself took, say that loud. My infirmities and bear his own body. My sicknesses. Okay, Dr. Ru, you say those two things together. He took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses in his body. What he has borne, do you have right to bear it anymore? No. What he paid for, do you have right to pay for it the second time? No. Say no. Jesus taught the apostles this. Thank you, ma'am. He taught the apostles that he paid for their sins and paid for their sicknesses. And then he now called them to be against the devil. Let's look at what he did. Matthew 9, verse 32. Please listen to me carefully tonight. We are not in a religious service tonight. We are in the teaching of our rights in Christ. Verse 32. Read it very well. God is a healer. Say that loud. And Jesus is against the devil. Look at me, everybody. Put your eyes on me. Say it with me loud. God is a healer. healer. Jesus is against the devil. devil. Say the two things together. Okay, look at verse 32. Matthew 9. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man, possessed with what? Possessed with what? A devil. Let's see what Jesus did to it. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitude marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. Thank God that we have a church. Whether it is one out of one thousand that is healed, or one out of one million that is healed, There's a church where somebody is healed. I wish I was speaking English. I say I wish I was speaking English. Is that English? Whether it is only one person healed here a year. Or two healed in six months. There's a healing place in England. Somebody should say amen. Amen. Devil possessed a man with dumbness. Jesus saw that dumbness. Verse 33. What did Jesus do to it? Rub the head and thank the devil for what he had done. Read me verse 33. One, two, go. Okay, look at what the religious people did. One, two, go. Verse 34. But the Pharisees said... He casted out devils through the prince of the devils. Verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Religion will bind you, and religion will find forth. But God will do his job. I wish you heard what I said. Sometimes, 
When we hear people, if you know what people like, this professor, a university professor, a medical doctor, bought for me in Benin. Before, now, it, thank God for now, in Benin, when, when our church says someone is raised from the dead, nobody argues anymore. When we say somebody is healed, nobody argues anymore. Why? Because they've seen the proof. There was a time when I said somebody is healed, they say it's a lie. Somebody is born again, it's a lie. Somebody is saved, it's a lie. But now, even if somebody were not dead and they say he's raised, they are going to believe. <laughs> when I used to make effort to convince them that this is true, they say it's a lie. But now that they see it's true, it is true. Because you can't fight truth. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus did it. Look at chapter 10. He progressed. He was one doing it. Chapter 10. See whether that is in your Bible. Verse 1. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. To do what to unclean spirits? And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. In the hospital, the teaching hospital, where this man had been a medical doctor and senior doctor. All that physician see him lay hand on the sick head. He does not only believe in injecting and medicating, if that is the correct word in medicine. He also lays hand and says to sickness, the subject to what sickness? The one that he believes is very serious, he prays. The one that is minor, he gives injection. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Why does he merge the two? Because prayer is more powerful than medicine. I wish somebody heard what I'm saying. Whether you believe it or not, God is the healer. Doctors give treatment, God's healing. I believe in medicine, but I believe that medicine without God is not right. Doctors treat, God heals. Doctors show concern, but God gives a cure. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe in medicine. Jesus saw the dumb man he cast out the devil. Immediately the devil came out. The dumb spoke. As long as the devil was there, the man was dumb. But when the devil came out, the man spoke. So what was possessing the man was a dumb spirit. When the spirit comes out, the liberty is given for expression. When the spirit stays there, the dumbness is there. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm sure I'm not giving you too much to swallow tonight. As long as that dumb spirit is there, you are going to be dummy. You don't think right, you don't behave well. Lawyers will say that's a mischievous spirit. But doctors will say that is a disease. And pastor will say that needs to come out. That's why we are here. You, doc, you lawyer accuse him, doctor you treat him, me cast him out. Trinity, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Sickness is causing offense. So we put it to him that he's in the wrong house. Then the doctor bring knife to cut it. Then the pastor bring mouth to chase him out. Three ways. We must not in any form take devil for granted that he's a good friend. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus now called 12 men. And said you saw what I did. Now I give you power against unclean spirits. To do what? To cast them out. Mm. Alright. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 3. The third chapter of Mark. Your part and God's part. This is Jesus' part concerning sickness and demons. Okay, we start from verse 9 of Mark chapter 3. He spake unto his disciples, 
that a small sheep should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. Verse 10. Are you there, Mark chapter 3? Is somebody following what I'm reading tonight? Verse 10. For he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him. As many as had plagues. Verse 11. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. In the Bible, Dr. Reed, I taught this one in Australia. The only time people fell in the, in the Bible was when they have unclean spirit. But modern preachers, even when you are standing, they send you on the floor. Oh Lord, they didn't follow what I'm saying. Look at verse, what verse is that? Verse 11. Read it very well. Those of you who think you are falling under anointing, see why you are falling. Occasionally. Occasionally. Sometimes. Some people. Not everyone. Read verse 11. One to go. I was telling them in Australia, the only time people fell in the Bible was when they have unclean spirits. But nowadays, it's a habit. We want to show people that we are under spirit. We are spirit possessors. So everyone that comes before us must fall. Let's see what Jesus did to the people who fell. Verse 12. Verse 12. Read your Bible. Come on, loud. Verse 13. Verse 14. He ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. Verse 15. And to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Do you see that? Jesus is not praising demon spirits in any form. Those who fell with unclean spirits, he did not ordain them. Somebody should say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is tough for you, but this is good. Because I hear some of you running, not, not, not many of you here, but every time Christian here, a preacher with fallen spirit gift has come to town. Everybody rush. Even when he has not come near them, boom, boom. Brother, how was the service? I fell. How long were you on the floor? Three hours. What were you doing? Drinking. Peter, I told them in Australia, no fish that have lived in ocean for 10 years will be jumping when you see shower. You didn't hear what I said. If fish come to the shore and see some rain falling, does the fish begin to jump? Hallelujah, there's rain. Does it? Why? It's accustomed to water. The reason many of you jump when you go to London, when you see people falling down, because you have not been used to... Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Reed said I shouldn't say that. Okay, I should say it. The reason many people are jumping when they see shower is because they've never been to the sea. If you were inside water and rain is falling, chakaka, shaya, sha. You don't say hallelujah if you were inside the sea. But if you have never seen water before, you are going to jump. How many hours? Three. But the fish live in the sea for life. So if you are boasting of three hours under the spirit because you are not used to water. I wish somebody heard what I said. You say somebody came. I was in the spirit for three days. The fish said, I've been in the water for 20 years. Verse 14. Read it. One to go. Verse 15. me, I have power, I have power. To, heal. to heal sicknesses 
and to cast out devils. Shout hallelujah. Where are we here tonight to receive power to cast out devils? Look at another thing he did for the twelve. Look at look chapter nine. If you don't know where to find Luke, look chapter nine of Luke's gospel. Verse one and two. Listen again while we are here. Then he called his twelve disciples together. Is that in your Bible? Now let's read it together. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Say cure. cure. Diseases. Disease. Now what did he do to the twelve he called? He called them to do what for them? Give them power. To do what? To cast out and to heal. Say I'm a devil caster. And a healer. Amen. Say it loud. I'm a devil caster. Amen. And a healer. Amen. All right. Verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. And to heal the sick. Why do we gather here? So we can take ourselves from slavery mentality. Constantly seek. Always wanting to be healed. It's time for us to stop looking for who will heal us and look for who to heal. The spirit of religion teaches you to subject. And the spirit of Christ teaches you freedom and liberty to be well. For by his stripes I'm what? By his stripes. He wounded. He was bruised. By his stripes I'm healed. Okay, anybody sick tonight that is still on the wheelchair must not wait for me because I'm not going to pray for you. Chapter 10. If you get up, you'll be well. Look at what he told the disciples. Verse 8. Chapter 10, verse 8. Message to the disciples. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as I said before you. Verse 9, heal the sick that are daring, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto who? You. Why is the kingdom come? Because there's healing in the kingdom. Verse 19 of the same chapter. Oh God. Behold. I didn't hear you. Somebody shout yes. yes. Nothing shall by any means hold who? I didn't hear you. Say me. me. Stand to your face. Say nothing. nothing. Shall, shall by any means, any means. hurt me. me. Nothing, nothing shall, shall by any, any means hurt me. Say it loud. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay. Are you getting it? Is somebody getting that? Okay. Now, that is God, the healer, Jesus, the healer, apostles, the commissioned to heal. Is that in your Bible? Matthew 12. Or I look at from verse 10 of Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 12, beginning from verse 10. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? He said unto them, Look at that, look at that. What man shall there be among you that we shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, would he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then said, they, then said he to the man, Set forth thy hand. And he set it forth. 
and it was restored whole like as the other. Verse 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him for healing a withered hand. Verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitude followed him, and he healed them. How many? I say, how many? I say, how many? I say, how many? All. Look at Luke chapter 4. Oh, we are making progress. I like this. Yeah, where you think they are getting anything? All right. Chapter 4. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Every time Jesus saw sickness, Dr. Reed, he was against it. Every time Peter, he saw devil, he was against it. Why should we be the one buying body lotion to rob the devil when he comes to our house? Why should we buy perfume to spray him and welcome him to our room? Jesus was against it and he's teaching the disciples to be against it. Look at this verse. 38 of Luke 4. He arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever and they besought him for her. That's a different message. I will preach it here one day. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever and he left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. But 40. Now, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and did what? And did what? And did what? Chapter 6. Look. Chapter 6 of Luke's Gospel. Mm -hmm. Look at these verses. Verse 17. Verse 17. Read with me. One to go. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. We come to the house of God to be healed. We come to Christ to be healed. We are to be victors and not victims. Constantly. Whenever you come with sickness, don't take it away. The word I'm emphasizing here tonight, they came to be healed. Not to watch. Many come to watch. I was told you can heal. So here am I. Do it and let me go. You understand me? I have five minutes to be here. If you are not going to do it, I'm going now. Okay? Are you ready? Do it. Come on. I say heal me. A man who behaved like that did not come to be healed. He came to query. And he'll go back with his sickness. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? An inquirer gets answer. A querier gets more queries. Oh God. What verse are we next? 18. One to go. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed. Verse 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. But there went virtue out of him. And heal them all. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew 14, 34. When they were gone over, they came into the land of Genesaret. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Verse 35. When the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were what? Diseases. Enquirer will become a receiver. If you desire to be healed, you can be healed. Verse 36. 
thank God for this. And besought him that they might only do what? Touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made perfectly whole. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, that was the disciples. Now let's see Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Now look at the verse I want us to read. Beginning from the 12th verse. Listen to this. And by the hands of the apostles. Say with my hands. We have many signs and wonders wrought. Among the people. And they were all with one accord. In Solomon's porch. Verse 13. And of the rest. Does no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. Verse 14. And believers. Come on. Say it loud. We are the more added to the Lord. Multitudes. Both men and women. Is that in your Bible? Then verse 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing the sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed, everyone, by Peter. God did this. The apostles are now doing it. Mark chapter 16. Verse 17. Everybody, this is your turn now. Say with me, God did it. God did. Jesus did it. Jesus did. The apostle did it. Apostle did. Now it's my turn. Verse 17. One to go. Signs shall follow them that pass. Are you a believer? What is going to follow you from now? Look at the next line. In my name shall they cast out devils. Say I'm a devil caster. They shall speak with new tongues. Say I can speak with new tongues. Maybe some of you don't believe in that, but it's very important. Everybody who is a born again Christian must speak in tongues. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Good. Look at the next verse. Now we read verse 17 again. These signs shall follow them that believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. This sign shall follow me. Follow Jesus said, In my name shall they cast out devil. Say his name. His name. I, shall I shall cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongues. Speak new Say, that is good for me. Good. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. It's in your Bible. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Who is Jesus talking about? Say, I. I. Start with me again. God did it. God did it. Jesus did it. Jesus did Apostle did it. did it. I'm a believer. I'm a now it's my turn. Look at what believers did. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. This is not to the twelve. It's to the believers. And they went forth. Say, I will go forth. And everywhere. Say, I will preach everywhere. The Lord walking with them. Say, God will walk with me. And confirming the word with signs. Following me. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2. Look at what Paul says here. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Say, I will preach today with power and authority. And wisdom, and wisdom of God. Of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you want God to be using you from today? Come forward. All who want God to be using them from today, come forward. 
All of you want God to start to use you to become healer and not the sick. To become loser and not the bound. Come forward. Jesus, Lord of mercy. Yeah.